Hello everybody, it's Itesmog217, and today we're reviewing a quite large set. It is the LEGO Ninjago Legacy Ninjago City Gardens. The set number is 71741, it contains 5,685 pieces and 18 minifigures. Well, technically 19 with the Golden Woo. But, uh, that can be seen on the bottom of the box there, all the minifigures that are included. But we'll have a more detailed look at them further into the video. But, man, big box. Now, if you're wondering, okay, how much does this big set cost? Well, it costs you $39.99 Canadian, $299 USD, and $274.99 pounds. This is quite a large set. And it took me about roughly 15 hours to build, but still really cool. And if you're wondering, okay, what's at the top of the box? Shows off the names of the figures, so that's pretty cool. Of course, you got that golden woo. Then on the sides of the box, you got this right here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. On the other side of the box, this is a big box. Nothing too special, just shows how big the set is, so if you're interested, those are the measurements. And then on the back of the box, you got a little close-up of all the details, all the little rooms, but of course, we'll have a look at that further into the review. And then you, this is a modular set, so you can attach to other modulars, so... Just keep that in mind. But yeah, that's the box. Let's have a look at the actual set. Okay, so here we have the main build, and my goodness, this thing is so huge that it goes way past my normal filming area. That's how big it is. But uh, I love the details all around it. So, turning this around... You can see all the amazing details, but of course, we'll take off all the different sections and look at them in great depth. But this is just a little look around of all of the areas. Really interesting design techniques. Just wow. This thing is pretty heavy. To move that's for sure but my goodness the amount of detail I guarantee you it will amaze you with the amount of detail in this thing anyway let's look into each specific area and pretend we're building it up with each different building so yeah after moving all the buildings this is what remains for the foundation and this little area, they call it the Temple Island. And looking at that, that is just beautifully done, in my opinion. And you even get a little Zane statue, which counts as a little minifigure. But we'll have a look at all the minifigures near the end of the video. But there are some Technic pins to make it so you can connect this to other modular-styled sets. But I just love the look of the watery area. It's just really well done, and it continues all around... The build and it's just awesome and i like the use of the weapons pack in green how they integrated that into the build you do have a nice tree bit with a little seating for two minifigures pink frog and a little t table here for the building that's going to be put here which you'll see in a bit but really love the detail on this thing so far and there's even a little island at the back here. Just a little tree and bushes. That's pretty cool. Um, again, here's all the detailing with the watering, water area. Love it. It's just nice and smooth and it just looks like a nice little pond. That's kind of what it gives off to me. Now, underneath here, we have some gold bars and silver, some jade knives. And a trophy in gold stored in here. And then you got a crate here. And that translates to literally Easter egg. And it shows a golden ninja with an orange uh, wrap on the top there. So I'm wondering, is that referring to a future golden coal uh, based off of a rebooted? 
Now, you may be wondering what's in the crate. The instructions say just to put in a one by one square translucent green tile, so kind of weird of an inclusion, but that's an interesting sticker. Let's look at the first building. Quick little thing before I forget it, this little tree build has a little bird in a nest, so I think that's a nice little touch. But yeah, onto the first building that we're going to have a look at. So here we have the first building that we're going to have a look at. It doesn't have an official name in the directory that's included in the instructions, but it kind of looks like a little food stand. And, of course, that's a stickered element. This is a stickered element. Now, I translated this from the Ninjago language, and that just says food. So, kind of looks like you order here, and then you pick up here. And the inside of the build looks pretty decent. Can't complain. Uh, it does have two doors, and I'll show what that looks like when it's attached to the gardens, of course. There's a little balcony as well. Open and close the door there. And there's enough room for, like, maybe two minifigures in there. And there's some drinks in there, and then some more drinks, and then some food. Still, I like the soup uh, bowl and the pot that's included. Really interesting, and I like how they used the little book uh, cover pieces right there, uh, as well as the actual book piece itself for the counter. That's a really cool part usage. Let's attach this to the gardens. So when it comes to attaching this to the gardens, most of these little buildings fit on two jumpers, like this one. So literally, you just gotta place it on right there. I forgot to mention there's also a little light there. That's how that fits. It looks kind of nice. Kind of see how that kind of fits into the gardens. Let's have a look at the next building. For the next building we have here, we can only assume is Ronin's Pawn Shop. Again, doesn't say in the directory. But that's okay. As for translating this sticker, it translates to something I honestly cannot translate. It does not look like any of the Ninjago symbols to me. If it does to you, maybe leave a comment in the comment section down below what that looks like for translation. But it's a nice little flower as well as a door that can open and close. Turning the model around. Got some lights and uh, from where this is placed in the set, it kind of makes sense why this is all an opened up area. Now, as you can see in here, you got a handful of stuff, as well as a tile, a stickered tile, that has a little map of the Dark Island of Ninjago. So that's cool for a little poster inside the shop. Now, there is a little book case right here, and if we just pop those off, one minute we can see that they are stickered tiles. Now, from my knowledge, the every occasional fancy Ninjago set, they include one of the original trading cards as a stickered tile. So that's what these are referencing. I like how those just fit onto the bookcase by clipping them into place. Kinda like so. If you can kinda see that there. Kind of clip in the place. Now I'm assuming you guys can see that on camera. There is an Atlantis trident. It's nice to get that as an inclusion as well as what I'm assuming is the blade cup. As well as you got some scales to tip, you know. As well as a ladder that can lead up to the next building which we'll have a look at la uh, later. And then you can kind of see a minifigure head with a top hat and a mustache. So that's nice. And then you got the storefront right here. So that's cool, you can display a minifigure there. Now there is a trap door feature, but I'll show that off when I put it into the build. But, nice light fixtures, really cool looking. Yeah, let's add this onto the gardens. Now, in regards to adding this little building to the gardens, you remember that area where we had the, the Easter egg sticker? Well, you just take that, and since there's a jumper there, you just put it on there. Remember that trap door I mentioned? If you flip that up, you can kind of see the little gold and such that is hidden away. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, on to the next building. So here we have the Tea Time Balcony according to the Ninjago Buildings directory. Honestly, this looks pretty cool just on its own. I like the design and build of it and 
it this goes above Ronin's pawn shop, so that ladder is going to be appearing right here so, to have access to there. And I don't know, I've never seen this piece before, uh, but it looks pretty good. I mean, like you, if you wanted to, you can kind of poke it out like that, have it as like an open window. I don't know, up to you, I guess. But it does fit nicely in there, and they do have a nice flower in the window there. And, I don't know, there's a lot of sticker tiles there that I just don't recognize, personally myself. But there is a trophy, and then a teapot, and then two teacups. So those are always nice to get. But yeah, that just fits above Ronan's pawn shop, which we'll show off now. Okay, so this section, again, you can see there's jumpers on top of Ronan's pawn shop. So all you do is just take this, like that line it up enough where it can just be placed like so so that's pretty cool how that just kind of hangs off a little bit but as you can tell there's more jumpers which means there's more buildings to add and uh remember i said that, that ladder kind of appears you can kind of see that i hope but you can kind of see that the ladder's there so yeah that lines up pretty well next building we have is the Ninjago Fan Apartment. Now this one is a really cool looking build. You got windows with flowers on them. However, there's no way to open up said windows, unfortunately. But looking inside, wow. Uh, here, there's a technique that they have in each build that you can use to some degree. I'm actually breaking the rules here by taking apart the build, but they have a nice little lamp that I think is referring to Day of the Departed, so that's cool. And looking in there, you can see a little roller skate that I think is supposed to refer to the X1 Ninja Charger. So that's cool. And on the top here, I'm pretty sure these are Season 14 Ninjago sets that, as of the time of recording this, haven't been released yet. So that's pretty cool that they included those that early. In the corner here, you can kind of see some temple builds. And then over here, you got a little lava lamp, I'm assuming. Minifigure statue. Oh, this one. This sticker tile I find to be intriguing. Back when the Ninjago movie came out, they had this promo for a poster that looked exactly like this. I actually own this poster, but I can't find where I put it. So unfortunately, I can't show you guys. That's a nice little Easter egg to put in there. Now, there's also the Ninjago fan bed, which is also stickered, but if you can manage to pop it off enough... Like it does, it's removable, like so. You kind of see there's a sigh in there. So that's nice that they got a little weapon storage in there. And like, who would be a Ninjago fan if you didn't have a weapon underneath your bed, hey? Anyway, for the bed, just, these are both stickered pieces, but they look really cool for a bed. Anyway, let's show off where that fits into the build. Oh, before we do that, it does have a little thing that here that, right here that says Ninjago. Okay, now I think we can show it off where it fits on the build. Okay, so this building kind of fits on top of the little tea shop, which, oh, by the way, that has a satellite dish. So again, there's jumpers, and you can just place it on like so. Now, the one issue I have is that there's no ladder to access this room if you're a minifigure. The lamp's in the way. There's nothing like there is with the Ronin's pawn shop, so I don't know, maybe the person who lives in this apartment has to do some sweet ninja skills to get access to this apartment. Anyway, well, let's move on to the next interesting part of this build. Here we have the walkways. This is the second level to the gardens, and these little billboards are just full of Easter eggs, I'm sure. If you want, you can try and see if you can decode them. You can pause the video right about... Come on here if you want to have a go at decoding that one that one now for this one I'm gonna throw you a bone this one's rock Raiders reference to Lego rock Raiders that was pretty cool and then we have this one says Bolobo which we did get a minifigure in the tournament of elements so that's nice not sure what this one's referring to maybe you guys can help me out with that one Got this one right here. Really like how they did the frontier using the Prime Empire Ninja 
uh, shoulder armor pieces, as well as using skeletons as well. That's an interesting thing. Then we got toy, and then a sticker with the Hands of Time logo. Then we got something that's obviously Prime Empire, and it's nice to get those unprinted controllers. Those are pretty cool. And I've had some difficulty translating this one, so again, maybe you guys can help me. And then we just got this thing on the end here. And as regards to the jumpers, this area I feel would have been really nice if they included maybe a few more crates with Easter eggs or something. Just something to fill up this space. It's just a little bit of wasted potential, but I don't know. Maybe that's for you guys to decide what goes in there. You do have a nice satellite as well on the side here using a blaster piece. So that's pretty cool. And you do have a trash can, as well as this little micro build that fits in to the Ninjago fans' apartment. And this is basically Jay's Stormfighter, if I had to guess what this was a micro build of. And that just kind of moves them down. If you're trying to have this flat, the thing it's on makes it so it's flattened out. So, you kind of see how that works. Oh, I forgot to mention the rest of the tree. The tree build looks really cool, and I like how they included this 10th anniversary tile print as well. You also get that for the Golden Woo figure stand, but still, nice inclusion. Anyway, let's see how this looks on top of the gardens. So that's what that looks like on top of the gardens. Again, those just fit onto jumpers from the other buildings. Again, looks really cool all around. Just visually appealing. And, like I was telling you guys about the Ninjago fan apartment, it just kind of drops down and hangs above there. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, on to the next building. For the next section of the build, we have the ice cream shop. And, wow, this, for the size it is, it definitely looks like an ice cream shop. The sticker here says, Ice Planet is the name of the shop. And you got a cute little penguin, which in the designer video, the designer really loves the design of that penguin, and the penguin says, yummy! That's of course an open sign. And there is another tie right here, which translates to museum, because you know there's Museum of Natural History. Yeah, so that's where these stairs lead to in the build, but we'll get to that later. Turning this around, you can kind of see a little I want to say fan. I don't know what this is called off the top of my head, unfortunately. And then there is a spilt ice cream, so that's pretty cool how they did the part usage of that. And speaking of part usage, I really like how they use the game controllers right here. That is a really cool design. And as well, you've got the butcher knives and black pieces as well. This as well. So that's really cool. I really like that. But looking into the Ice Planet Shop, you can see, got a little counter with a sticker of each flavor of ice cream, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you do also get an area where there's a stack of cones, as well as a dri uh, milkshake, I'm assuming. You got some cups and such shown off in there, little sink, it's kind of hard to show this on camera, apologies. And then they do have a stickered tile piece, which I think you guys can kind of see there. Kind of shows you what kind of ice cream you want. You can get a one scoop, two scoop, three scoop, or you can get different kinds of popsicles. Kind of wish they would have included a popsicle piece in here as well, but oh well. Uh, nothing much else for this little section. Let's add it on to the gardens. So yeah, these just pop on to, this, to the jumpers right here. Like so, you just place it on and press down boom it's in place and that looks pretty sweet how you can fit a minifigure in there make it walk up the stairs into the museum of natural history which we'll have a look at in a bit here but let's move on to the next building here we have chen's noodle house i think this is an excellent selection of a building for to be included in the gardens it's just People have been asking for it for a while, and I like how they even went out of their way to include a figure to be used on the sign. And that actually is a minifigure. If you push this down, take that out, that is a minifigure. They just attach the legs on backwards so they can be put on there. But we'll look at this figure when we look at all the minifigures, but he just, that's how he's put into the display. So that's pretty cool. Again, like the use of the sausages to make up that. And this translates to... Best in the city, so, well, I mean, like, 
what other competition is there for a noodle house so that's pretty cool we're here you got another sticker which translates to new parmo is what it translates to and it is a parmesan chicken parmo it's an interest it looks like an interesting dish this is, this does look accurate based on research so that's pretty cool of an inclusion and this apparently is a table you'll see how it's a table when we attach to the gardens but turning this around you got a little flower section you know so that's pretty cool and they got a little open area right here so you can see where a minifigure would be cooking uh kind of hard to access but i'll show off that in a bit but looking inside one minute here you can literally tug at this and that just opens up because it's being held in there by this clip piece but yeah you got a nice dark blue statue lighting kind of see the stickered tile piece which shows the anachondri cult so that's pretty cool as well as a table for two and a little cooking area as well as some stickers that show what you can order so those translate to sushi this one i believe translates to shrimp boil as for the last one it translates to ramen apparently this is ramen so that's pretty cool yeah this area does fit a minifigure i don't I, it's gonna be a pain oh wait no never mind you can just pop that off put the minifigure in and then pop this back into place and then close that up but yeah that's basically chen's noodle house pretty cool let's add this to the city so that just fits onto some jumpers right here next to the trash can like so you kind of have to put more oomph into this because it does need to kind of be pushed into place that well but like i was saying for the little table that's where it is that fits in pretty well to the gardens now then on to the next section okay so for this section it's actually two little buildings in one You've got the ninjago museum of history in this area and then this little green building right here is a student apartment so let's have a look at that one first a uh, quick note, this, I believe, is a way for you to get to the upper levels when this is completely built. But, uh, nice flowers, a little railing, a little balcony. Again, a door that can swing open and closed. More flowers, as well as a window. Telescope, which can move up and down, like that. More flowers, and I like the use of the handcuff pieces for railings as well. Those are pretty cool, if I say so myself. You got a little access area down there, that little hole right there. That's where the staircase gets up. And then that, this, there's a sticker here on the door. That translates to the word enter. So that's pretty cool. And there's a little compass here as the door handle. That's pretty cool. We'll have a look at that later. But going back to the apartment here. And removing one of the walls, you can see there's a little painting going on. And the painting looks exactly like the Ninjago City Gardens. So that is a pretty cool stickered piece. I like that a lot, especially getting that paintbrush with an orange tip. And I like how this has a little holder for a pink umbrella. That's cute. So there's also a door here, which kind of gets in the way with the painting, but still. There's also a little TV with a sticker on it, but that shows off Gail Gossip from Ninjago City News Network, so that's cool. And you do have what looks to be a bed right here, so that's also pretty cool. Behind the painting is just a pineapple. Nothing too special, but still pretty cool. Remember how I said we had to remove this section? Well, on either end, there is a little light above each plant, so this is what the alternate side plant looks like. And that, of course, can be easily put back on, because those are using those pieces right there. Now, there is a little poster thing attached here, so prying that off ever so carefully you can see that's another sticker now this translates to mega monster amusement park that's pretty cool that they threw that in as an easter egg i kind of would like to see if they would release a set of mega monster amusement park you know because they did kind of leave an easter egg here but of course that's also a tie into a few episodes from the earlier episodes in the show but still really cool to have as a sticker 
Now looking at the Ninjago Museum of History at the front here, I really like how they use this roller coaster piece. It just looks interesting how they use that. And the crab thing as well, that looks cool as well. And then this piece right here, kind of like a little flag or banner that I'm not sure what it quite translates to. It's a little bit too difficult for me personally to translate, but if you guys can figure that out, that'd be graciously appreciated. If you can comment that, but um, anyway, moving back to the roller coaster bit. Now, the way this is designed, it's almost as if people, they, they, the people who made this set knew that there were going to be people reviewing this because the wall itself is removable. So that is extremely helpful, but also pretty cool if you want to have a look at the innards as well. So over here we have a sticker that is referring to the Hands of Time or the Snake Wars, I think is what it is. So that's nice. In the corner there, I don't think I can get the camera angled perfect, but I'll try. You can kind of see there's a little shelf there with a compass and a velvet red trophy piece. So that's pretty cool. And you got, of course, a snake staff on display in the museum. That's also really cool. And then you got something that I think is really adorable. A advent calendar styled build for a Destiny's bounty. That's awesome. I do like how these are security cameras as well. How those turned out. Uh, before we go into this section though, let's have a look at what's on the wall here. So we got some stickered pieces. We got the serpentine symbol i think right there so that's pretty cool master yang from the Go possession season and then ray and maya nice little sticker as well and then i'm not sure what's in this display case but it's still pretty cool how they use this they use this glass piece on a chest and it opens and closes pretty easily again i have no idea what that's referencing um i don't know but it looks cool either way Anyway, let's move on to the other bits of the museum. You can see there's a little gem hidden in a display case right there, and I'm willing to bet that's the realm crystal. So that's pretty cool that they referenced that. You do have some more stickered tiles right here, and I'm pretty sure these characters are from Lego Adventures based on the looks of them. The shadow's kind of getting in the way of both of them, so I apologize for that. But take my word on it, I'm pretty sure that's what that's referencing. Moving over here, apparently this little build, based on the designer, what he said in the designer video, that's the Temple of Erjitsu set on display. So that's pretty cool. Then they got a little magazine rack that I guess, you can, well you can't really turn it, but uh, you got some nice tiles. You got, so, I mean like two of these are used in the Lego Dots blind bag packets, so it's not that hard to recreate it, as well as the fact that that green tile is a Lego Minecraft turtle eye piece, so that's a little weird. I don't know, <laughs> but they do have a little cash register, as well as a little entrance thing that does spin a little, so that's pretty cool. Uh, nothing much else I think I can add on to the museum, so let's just add that onto the gardens now. So weirdly enough, there's no jumpers on the tops of these two buildings, so it, but it's still, it fits in pretty cool. Here, let me just put this on and then show you guys. Sorry I couldn't show you how it's put on, but you just place it on top there and it just kind of fits into place for some weird reason. But it, it can't really move, it's just held in there by friction, I guess, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like this doesn't come off, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure if I was to turn it upside down, of course the whole thing would come off, but still. You get my point. Anyway. Let's move on to the final buildings of this set. For this little build, it's called the Rooftop Zen Garden. So, that's pretty cool. I mean, like, it does go off that little Zen vibes. And also, it does have a little scooter attached to that as well, which can hold a minifigure. So, that's pretty cool how that little scooter's done, how that's held in place. Um, I don't know. This looks really clean. Uh, you can hold a minifigure in there. Or two and looks all around pretty nice at the back there is a safe and inside the safe there is a one by two one by one sorry cheese slope in that color I'm not sure what that's referencing but okay and that's all that can fit in there which is fine pretty cool uh, now if you flip up these uh, ch chest roof pieces you can see there's some roller skates and an orange spaceman helmet 
This is the exact same Spaceman helmet that was included in the book, the, what's it called? Lego Minifigure of Visual History New Edition. That same minifigure's helmet. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's referencing to the Tournament of Elements Ninja Roll, that episode. Because it just seems to be fitting. But nothing much else to say about this little individual build. This is held in place by those th these bricks for on the actual build. Again, friction held in by friction. So let's add this onto the gardens. So where this is placed on the gardens is right on top of the student apartment. And so remember those bricks I showed you that were underneath? You just put them into place, and they just slide right in. That's what it looks like so far. <laughs> Starting to get pretty tall. Anyway, let's move on to the next section. Now the next section is the tower, and that is divided into four different sections in itself. So let's start with that. So for this first section, uh, it's called the Ninja Zone. And I just want to point out this little fish that's on the side. That's really cool, especially when they're using the Lego Mario feet. Uh, that's really cool, I'd say. Anyway, moving on, we got a little golden telescope, which can move around a lot better than the one included in the student apartment. And nice part usage of the faucet piece. Really cool. And the brick heads uh, glasses piece is used as these fence pieces. So that's really cool. And then on the back here you got a little poster, like a movie poster style thing, that is also a sticker, and that does translate to Space Police. Now, of course, if you want, you can remove that if you want to change it. Now, what can I change it to? Well, we'll get to that in the next section of the build, but yeah. Anyway, this little knob here, you can turn it, and that lowers the little ladder. This will make more sense once we attach it to the gardens, but still. Uh, what else? What else? Now, normally I would remove the minifigures for this area, but I thought it makes sense to have them in there. We do have a lounge chair with Cole holding a video game controller. And what game is he playing? Well, let's pull out the TV and see. He is playing... Wow. That's cool. Prime Empire. He's playing the game Prime Empire. That's pretty cool. And that, of course, is a stickered piece. Now, I don't know if that'll show up on camera or not, but... Underneath the TV is a little speaker, so that's cool. And then above the TV, you got a little stickered tile, and pulling that off, we'll have a better look at that. It shows all the ninja in their Legacy Wave 2 outfits. Kind of interesting that they showed Zane in the outfit that he appears in the Titan mech, so that's cool, compared to the other ones where they had the Tournament of Elements one. And then you can kind of make out Wu and Nia just hanging out in the back. So, that's cool, that's cool. And that, of course, just is put into place back there. And it, this does have a little arcade machine, but we'll get to that in a second. And then they have a little coat hook, coat rack, whatever the heck it's called, with a nice little toque in light blue. So, pulling out the arcade machine and putting that to the side, you got the arcade machine. Now, what game is this, you may be asking? Well, I'll tell you, it is... Street Ninja 2. Ooh. Wonder what the first game was like and like. And I like these are all stickered pieces as well. And I like how that kind of uses the season what was it? It's the hands of time season mask, so that's pretty cool. And that's the same on the opposite side. Now the screen itself is print is a sticker, but the little figure inside isn't. It's actually a printed tile, I believe. Uh, correct me if uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, that's a printed piece. But yeah, if you move the joystick... Uh-oh. I guess that's a complaint, is that it kind of gets a little stuck. But the idea is you move the joystick and the figure moves up and down. Here, let me see if I can dislodge it a bit. So yeah, if your figure gets stuck, just give the arcade machine a, a shake and it should fix it. But yeah, the idea is... You can move it up and down. To look, make it look like it's fighting something. So that's pretty cool. Just don't do it too far. Otherwise it'll get stuck. But if you want to make it come loose. Just shake it. Still really cute arcade build. With a little function inside it. Yeah let's attach that to the build. So the ninja zone 
fits right above the entrance to the museum. It does use the same technique as it did for that one, using the friction technique as I call it. And you just put that in, and that is held in place. Let's move on to the next section of the tower. Okay, so the next section of the tower is called the Hidden Room. It looks all the same looking all around, but if you look inside... Oh, what's that? A Ninjago J Legacy outfit? Okay, that kind of makes sense because this is a hidden storage-like room. And that just sits onto two one by two jumpers, so that's cool. And putting that aside, on either end, you can see there's interchangeable posters that you can swap out for. Now this, this translates to Adventure Island, and then in the little text there it says, Coming soon. So yeah, this is kind of implying that it's a movie, so that's pretty cool. I like how they included Johnny Thunder in his blind bag edition, but... That's the one interchangeable thing. Uh, I'll show off what it can look like for each alternate version. But there is one more on this end. And that one translates to Terror Aqua Sharks. I don't think that was a theme. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. But that looks like a pretty cool poster. Movie poster. Speaking of movie posters, let's have a look at what that looks like on the build that was mentioned previously. So we're moving the Space Police poster here like so it's pretty inter easily interchangeable you just take that out put that into place push that down that holds that into place so that's, that looks like this and then with the terror aqua sharks poster pretty cool i think out of my i think out of these three my favorite would probably be the johnny thunder one or the space police but i'm just going to keep it on the space police but yeah, let's add that to the build. So the uh, hidden room, same technique that's used with those pieces there. Oh, that's like a little nice lamp design. You just place it on there like so. Push that down. And uh, let's turn that around and see what that looks like with the movie poster. So that's what that looks like. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. Turning the knob, lowers the ladder. And that's what that looks like. Alright, on to the next part of the tower. For the next section of the tower, we have what's known as the ninja control room. And it's not, it doesn't quite look like a ninja control room until you tip it down. You can see there's enough spot for a minifigure. And there's a little control pad, as well as a screen that's stickered element. Now, pulling that out, we can see... It's a map of Ninjago City, and it shows that there's alerts in three different areas in Ninjago, and apparently they're hunting for Pythor and an Android. And with that, little text underneath translate to is alert, you know, because alert, there's all these notifications. Still, that just fits on there like so, and it can fit a ninja minifigure, just nothing too big and for the hair accessory piece so it's a bit of a tight squeeze but still pretty cool let's add that to the tower now actually i went back and thought uh we can just quickly look at the satellite array really quickly here since there's nothing too special about it beside there being satellite dishes antenna and that's pretty much it i mean like you can kind of move this around a little bit but yeah that just connects to the jumpers right there so you just simply it's a little bit of a pain to mess around with, but they can fit on there. And you kind of got to use some force to get it to fit on there. Eventually. There you go. And then you just press those down on all sides. Now we can add it to the tower. Okay, so to add it to the tower, you just see those jumpers right there. Take this and quite literally just kind of squeeze it in there and it falls right into place. Doesn't that look pretty cool? All right, we've got one more section of this build and then we'll have a look at the minifigures. So for the last removable section of this build, you kind of got like a little display area f for a skeleton and you can take this out to have a better look at it. And I think it represents a 
dragon skeleton. So, of course, this is going above the Ninjago Museum of History. And I must say, I kind of like the little cherry blossom tree thing that's going on here, but yeah, that's what, what that looks like all around. Nothing too special. Let's add that to the build. So when adding this to the gardens, you see that jumper right there? That's where you want to try and put it. So taking this like so, you just kind of mess around with it for a bit until it just falls into place and then push down and then boom, it's in place. And that is the entire build kind of showing you off what that's all like. Let's have a look at all the minifigures included, both official and unofficial figs. So, yeah. All right, so taking a look at the unofficial minifigures that are included in the set, we got the Titanium Zane and then the Chen's Noodle House minifigure. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed with the Zane one. Kind of feel like they could have used the titanium head and titanium torso and legs. They kind of cheaped out on that, unfortunately, but that's okay. As for the Master Chen's Noodle House figure, I think the only thing exclusive about it is the torso and the face print, if I'm correct, but that's pretty cool. Got a winky face, so I like that. Anyway, let's move on to the other figures. Before I forget, each uh, Lego Ninjago Legacy set comes with a collectible golden ninja figure. There's six to collect, but this is an unofficial, well, I guess official, seventh collectible golden figure of Master Wu. And uh, this is exclusive just to this set. He does come on his own special stand right there. And let's have a look at what this figure looks like without the beard, which is nice. So apparently he does have his... Uh, new facial prints so that's pretty good i like that the torso looks like exclusive to him the head and torso are exclusive to him however the legs are used for all the ninja that are the golden figures for the legacy sets for 2021 so that's pretty cool nice figure to get and definitely one of the main reasons why you would probably want to get this set is for this figure but still pretty cool okay so here we have scoop and then sensei wu's dog uh, at least that's what the product description says. Um, I don't know, Scoop is a pretty cool brick-built figure. Definitely has some nice part usage to him. Uh, no complaints, the arms are posable, legs are posable. Pretty cool, if I say so myself. Here we have the mechanic, and uh, I could be butchering the name here, CC. I don't know. Either way, the mechanic is the first time we're getting him in minifigure form, and so that is just completely awesome to get. Kind of adds some more exclusivity for this set. And he's got a exclusive facial print and torso and nice dual molded legs. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people were complaining about it not being so accurate, but he did get a, a fix for making it an actual robot arm in the TV show, so I don't know what people are complaining about. As for CC, I do like that torso print, however, it is not exclusive. And I don't think the, that leg printing is exclusive either. I do like the ponytail hat combo, uh, and that head print, I am going to go out on my guest here and say that isn't an exclusive, but it is double-sided. So, that's pretty cool. Here we have Misako and Clutch Powers. I do believe the Misako is exclusive to this set. However, Clutch Powers is not, as he was included in the 2019 accessory pack. But they do have double-sided facial expressions, as you can see. So those are pretty cool. But yeah, nothing much else to say other than these are really cool figures to get in this very expensive set. But yeah, no complaints about these two minifigs. Moving on. Here we have Tito, I think is how his name is pronounced, and Eileen. So I don't think that torso is exclusive, and I think nothing about that figure. Nothing about these two figures are exclusive to my knowledge. You do get a nice pretzel and a VHS accessory. Uh, there is no double-sided print for this minifigure, nor this one, unfortunately. So, still, really cool figures. 
Nice inclusion, especially for parts uses. I'm pretty sure the combination is exclusive, but the figures themselves I do not think are exclusive. Moving on. Here we have, uh, oh, I'm going to butcher this name, Kiado and May. So that, these are pretty interesting figures. Again, I don't think anything about them are exclusive. It is nice to get that Kanan Jarrus hairpiece in black and this hairpiece in pink. It's nice to get that briefcase piece as well as a printed phone. Now, one thing I thought was really interesting that I instantly recognized when I built this set is this minifigure's head is young Teen Woo's head print. So that's pretty cool part usage for that figure. Now, for May, uh, she does have a double-sided head, and that's just the expression. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Moving on. Here we have the Legacy J outfit. There's nothing much to say about this figure other than it uses a transparent yellow head to hold the mask. And then for this other minifigure, the name is for this figure is Christina. I love the inclusion of this torso print. It's definitely a nice to have since it's an Ninjago set. However, it's not entirely exclusive. It's nice to get that Black Widow hairpiece in blonde and this person does have a double-sided facial print. I'm willing to bet that this is the uh, Genie Girl from the Series 12 CMF. I'm pretty sure you guys in the comment section down below can correct me if I'm right or not. But yeah, moving on. Here we have Urban Cole and Ronin. It's nice to, that they included Ronin. However, as of the time of this recording, this figure is exclusive to just the Ninjago City Gardens. Got some nice exclusive torso printing on Cole as well. So that's nice, but he does use the typical Ninjago movie facial print, so that's nothing too bad, though. As for Ronin, oh boy, he's got a unique facial print, I'd say. Removing the mask piece, that's what is his facial print, which again, I believe is exclusive to just this set as of the time of the recording this. No double-sided facial print for Ronin, though, but that's okay. Moving on, here we have... Hi is how I think the name is pronounced. He's basically the ice cream shop guy, as well as here we have Young Lloyd. Now, the torso for Young Lloyd is not exclusive, but I do think it's nice that we get that short leg in that green coloring, and it's nice that they brought back the Ron hair piece, and the facial print for Lloyd is the same that's included in the bounty. However, I think I got a misalignment for my Young Lloyd print. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. You think that's misaligned, but for Hai, I think it's what it is. He comes with an ice cream scoop and an ice cream cone. No double-sided facial printing, but that torso I do believe is exclusive. But still, pretty cool figures. On to the last four minifigures. We have Urban Nia and Urban J. Uh, there's nothing exclusive about Nia because she's been included in other sets in this outfit, but that is nice to get that torso but as for jay his torso is exclusive to the set but he does have that ninjago movie facial print and his accessory is a thing of flowers so that's pretty cool now for the last two minifigures we have kai and zane in their legacy ninja outfits uh there's nothing exclusive about these figures at all i mean like the combination of zane technically is exclusive to this set like just the combination but that's just the titanium head being shown and kai just has the ninjago movie facial print so nothing worth showing there anyway let's move on to the instructions and extra pieces and then the final thoughts of the set so this set includes three instruction booklets and on the first one what's this fan poster included oh yeah speaking of this set does come with an exclusive uh, miniature poster, and that's just kind of what it looks like, and my goodness, I love it. It's awesome, and it's done by a Ninjago fan who, who got this approved, I'm assuming. I haven't fully watched the Ninjago podcast thing that happened, but there's nothing on the back, but still really cool inclusion. Definitely brings back some memories of the pilot episode of Ninjago, but anyway, back to the instructions. Um, the first few pages uh, gives a little info right here. 
about the little poster, so you want positive video right about here to read that. Sorry for the shadow. Flipping the page, uh, we get some info about where each individual section of the build is. So that's what I was referring to. And then we got the Ninjago language, and there's a QR code if you want. You can try and scan that. Okay. And then the rest is just your average building instructions for all three build, uh, building instructions. So, as for the extra parts, however, this is all you get. I literally filled up a little cup for all, full of all these extra pieces. Uh, you get some quite interesting ones. I kind of wish I could show it to you in greater detail, but it's just too much of a mess. Sorry about that. But let's do final thoughts. Overall, I'd say this is by far my favorite LEGO Ninjago set. I definitely would recommend getting this if you can. I don't really have that many complaints for this set. Just a few nitpicks here and there, but still, it's really awesome. I would definitely recommend it if you can get your hands on it. But, yeah. Anyway, that's it for this review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the review, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're new to the channel. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in a future video. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye.